going on everybody? It's me again, Golden Blue Dude. And if you haven't already, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button because all we do here, college football and college basketball videos every single day. And please share this video around because if you like this content, I guarantee you somebody else will like this content. We also have a great Patreon page we're putting a lot of time and resource into. Exclusive chat rooms where you'll have access to me. Videos just for Patreon page and video suggestions. Plus, whenever I do my preview and prediction videos, I'll let my Patreons make the first choices. GoldenBlueDude.com is also a great website that Joey produced. We have eight great writers, but we're always looking for more, so email me if you're interested in that. And a great merchandise store. I really like our merchandise store. A lot of great stuff over there. And you can support Golden Blue through PayPal. Right now, every single donation is going to go towards getting me a P.O. box, so you can send me a mini helmet of your favorite team so I can display on my shelving forever in my background. Now for the topic at hand. Uh, ESPN kind of biting the hand that feeds them. I'm talking about the SEC. I keep up with ESPN a lot. I look at their articles, see what their opinions are on certain things. And this one kind of surprised me. They put out an article saying what conferences have the most approved going into the 2022 college football season. The two conferences that were not on the list at all, Pac-12, Big Ten. So they were saying the ACC, the Big 12, and the SEC have the most approved in the 2022 college football season. That one really made me raise my eyebrows because number one, the Pac-12 hasn't made the playoffs since 2016. Number two, ESPN and the SEC are buddies. But their reason for putting the SEC into this conversation was, uh, it'd be nice to see somebody other than Alabama and Georgia in the playoffs or win the national championship. Hello, did you forget about LSU in 2019? I mean, y'all know me by now. I am not an SEC homer, but I'm also not anti-SEC. I just call it the way I see it. This is ridiculous, ESPN. What are you thinking? So I came up with my list on the conferences that have the most approved in 2022. And at the very bottom of this is the SEC. I think the SEC has the least to prove in 2022. They're in every stinking college football playoff. They win the national championship more times than not. And you do see a variety of teams. Alabama, Georgia, and LSU. I mean, that's more than what other conferences can say. So honestly, I, I don't think the SEC has anything to prove in 2022. Whoever the SEC champion is, they're going to get into the playoffs. That is the criteria in the SEC. For you to get into the playoffs, all you have to do is win the SEC and you're in. So it, it really made no sense why ESPN would put them on the list and their reasons for putting them on the list. I have SEC at the bottom. Number four on this list, the conference that has the second to the least amount to prove in 2022, and that's the Big Ten. They're kind of in the same boat as the SEC, but it has been a little while since the Big Ten has won a national championship. However, they do place a team in the playoffs on a consistent basis. Basically, if you win the Big Ten, you're probably getting into the playoffs. I know it's a little dicey if you have two losses, but you still have a shot. You're the Big Ten champion, so you still have a shot. Now, one loss Big Ten champion, you're in, no doubt, no matter what. So yeah, that's why I have the Big Ten towards the bottom of the list slightly above the SEC. Number three was really, really close. Really, really close, but there was a tiebreaker. I'm putting the ACC at number three. That might surprise a few people because they're like, oh, the ACC, that's a weak conference. I mean, Clemson is the ACC, and I agree with that. What happened last year? The ACC did not make the playoffs. Was it a coincidence that Clemson did not win the ACC, and that's the same exact year that the ACC didn't make the playoffs? I do not think that's a coincidence at all. The ACC needs to prove that they can put in a team other than Clemson into the playoffs. Pitt won the ACC last year, but they didn't come close to getting to the playoffs, and they got beat in their bowl. Sorry, Pitt, you were not the team to take the ACC to the next level. Not at all. You were just kind of a fill-in until Clemson can get back on their feet, and that's exactly what happened last year. So that brings me to number two, and I'm going to say the Big 12. And there is a tiebreaker. Big 12 and the ACC kind of on the same level as far as having the most to prove in 2022. But the tiebreaker is the team that's carrying the load for the Big 12 is exiting for the SEC. At least for the ACC, Clemson is staying. So they have a lot to prove, but they still have their workhorse to get them there. For the Big 12, they're not going to have their workhorse for very much longer. They have a lot to prove in 2022. They have got to prove that they can get to the playoffs without Oklahoma. Oklahoma is the only team in the Big 12 that has made the playoffs. And I know it was close between TCU and Baylor back in the day, but that was a while back. It's been Oklahoma's conference ever since. Well, Oklahoma did not win the Big 12 championship last year, and what happened? The Big 12 got left out. So that proves my point. Wherever Oklahoma goes, that's where the Big 12 goes as well. So the Big 12 has a lot to prove in 2022 because not only is Oklahoma the only team that's been in the playoffs, 
but Oklahoma and Texas are headed to the SEC. So the Big 12 needs to prove they can float without Oklahoma instead of sink. So I think the Big 12 has a lot to prove this year. Last year they had a lot to prove and they didn't do a good job. They failed. I mean, congratulations to Oklahoma State and Baylor. You had great years, but you didn't make the playoffs. And that's what the Big 12 needs you to do. They need a team besides Oklahoma to be able to make the playoffs because Oklahoma is going to be gone. And that brings me to number one, which means I'm totally disagreeing with ESPN. I have the SEC at the bottom, and they should. The SEC is one of the conferences that has the most approved. Disagree with that. They left the Pac-12 because I guess they're just getting used to the Pac-12 not making the playoffs. That should not be what you're getting used to. Their standards should be higher. So I'm totally disagreeing with you on that, ESPN. And I'm putting the Pac-12 at number one. The Pac-12 most definitely has the most to prove in 2022. They have not placed a team in the playoffs since 2016 when Washington made the playoffs. They haven't even really come close. The problem is in the Pac-12, they can't have a champion that has one loss or less undefeated. So my opinion, the Pac-12, you need a team that can go undefeated and win the Pac-12. That's how you get in. At bare minimum, a team with only one loss to win the Pac-12 championship and get to the playoffs. If you got two losses, you're not getting in unless you get like a crap ton of help from the other conferences and that's just not happening. So the biggest problem with the Pac-12 is kind of the issues that I've been jumping on to the ACC and the Big 12 about not having an elite team. Now for the Big 12 and the ACC, I'm looking for them to show me more that they can put a team other than that one team into the playoffs. For the Pac-12, you need that one team. You need somebody to dominate your conference. I know that sounds kind of far-fetched and I don't know about going on blue dude, parody is a good thing. I agree with that, but at the same time, do you want to make the playoffs or do you not? You need a team to dominate either one loss, preferably undefeated. That's what you really need, an undefeated team. I don't care if it's USC, upcoming UCLA with Chip Kelly, Oregon in rebuild mode with a new coaching staff, or Washington looking to find their former glory. I don't care who it is. Or a Cinderella story like Washington State, Oregon State, Arizona State, I, I don't care. Somebody needs to step up. Utah, I haven't forgot about you. Pac-12 champs last year. I almost forgot, but I didn't. Somebody has to step up and dominate this conference. Maybe it is Utah. Maybe it is Utah that's going to take the next step and dominate the Pac-12 next year. They return a lot of key players. Their schedule isn't all that difficult. It's doable. Just don't slip up. That's the biggest thing. Stop slipping up. Stop losing games that you're like, man, well, I shouldn't have lost that one, but what's done is done. It's in the past. Let's move on which that's the mentality you're supposed to have, but at the same time, just win it. You need to win those games, the ones that you're supposed to win and the ones that are going to challenge you. That's how you get to the playoffs. That's how you prove to the playoff selection committee that you belong into the playoffs. So until a Pac-12 team can do that, you're going to keep getting left out of the playoffs in college football. So yes, I do have Pac-12 number one, the most to prove going into the 2022 college football season. Because I don't think you should accept, well, the Pac-12, they, you know, they're, they're just, they're so-so. They're not going to get to the playoffs. Maybe they'll surprise us one year, but we're not going to expect that. I don't think you should accept that as the standard if you're in the Pac-12. Make your standards higher. That's how you achieve your goals. If you don't have any goals, you're never going to achieve them. Make your goals high. Make your goals high. That way, when you reach them, you get to the playoffs. So y'all let me know in the comments section, how would you rank the conferences going into the 2022 college football season as far as who has the least amount to prove going into the 2022 college football season all the way to who has the most to prove going into the 2022 college football season? I look forward to your comments. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.